Let's make a start looking at what is called sensitivity analysis. This is a quantitative method of analysing the potential impact of risk events and determining which risk or event, if you will, has the greatest potential for impact by examining all the uncertain elements at their baseline values. Whew. Quite a detailed sentence. Let me unpack that and show you it's not as bad as it really means. You see, one of the most common methods used is called a tornado diagram. And what these do is these show the project sensitivity to cost or other factors against a certain risk. You've probably come across sensitivity analysis before, often within marketing, where trends and commercial factors may have a bearing on the launch of a new product. And sensitivity analysis would often be carried out that for a product with known features, how sensitive it might be with the arrival of a similar competitor's product, as an example, or with a competitor dropping a price for similar products that you're thinking about selling and how that might impact your particular new product. So coming back to risk, what we'd want to do is to choose an example. So let's assume you want to look at the sensitivity of using leading edge technology on the project in terms of cost. What you'd want to do is you'd want to arrange the different aspects or elements that would have some sensitivity to whether or not you're employing leading edge technology in terms of risks, of course. And here we've got technical risk, quality risk, project management risk, organizational risk, and so on. Just examples. And what you'd want to do is arrange them with the most severe cost sensitivity at the top, hence giving it this very approximate tornado shape, hence the name tornado diagram. And we can see at one extreme, using leading edge technology could reduce the costs from a technical perspective by minus 30 to 40,000, or it could impact by increasing costs by 40,000 or thereabouts. So considering costs as the metric in this case, we can see which risks would have the biggest impact on either the risk being a threat and increasing costs or the risk being an opportunity and actually reducing the cost of the project. Just before we leave this, can I remind you that I've used the example of costs here, but it may be some other aspect that you'd want to compare categorised risks against. Continuing, let's look at expected monetary value analysis, known as EMV. What is it? It's a statistical technique that calculates the average anticipated impact of a decision. It is calculated by multiplying the probability of the risk times its impact and then adding them together. Used in conjunction with the decision tree analysis. I have two examples to show you here. So let's work through this first one together. What a decision tree does is it takes into account future events in trying to make a decision today. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at these options. Suppose the project in your organisation wishes to either develop or buy out a particular e-commerce platform and you're not sure whether to develop it in-house or to get a third party to provide it for you. You need to gather some raw data here. Now let's suppose that we've done some work on the risk between making this decision and we've determined that the risk cost would be around $2.78 million. With that in mind, let's look at the options right now. We've approached a supplier and they've advised us that the cost of buying a commercial e-commerce package would be $1.825 million. If this solution worked first time and the implementation was successful, then the risk cost is $0. All we had to pay out was the cost of the product itself, $1.825 million. From our risk analysis and from knowledge of this particular vendor who would be creating a customized solution for us, we know that there's a 10% probability that the e-commerce package may have some problems and would fail. We know because of the work we've done on risk analysis already that it'll cost us, as I said earlier, an extra $2.78 million in terms of a financial impact. So let's now look at the in-house option if we designed and built it ourselves. I'll come to the cost in a moment. What we would know is, is that if we did it successfully, there'd be no extra risk cost. 
However, because of the complex nature of this package, rather than going to the experts, we believe the probability of us failing is higher. In fact, 25% probability. So there's a 25% probability of us incurring this extra risk cost of 2.78 million. Well, we need to put this information in a table and do some simple math on it. Now, if it happens to cost us $1.15 million to do it in-house, that's obviously a lot cheaper than buying it out. But these two probability figures need to be factored in. So what we now need to do is the calculation. And the important thing to remember is this. To use EMV, we have to take the initial cost plus the risk cost times probability. So these here are the initial costs, and here's the risk impact times the probability. So in terms of the buyout, the commercial e-commerce package, if you will, the initial cost is 1.825 million. The risk cost for both of them is the same, which is $2.78 million, but you need to multiply this by the 10% probability, which of course will give you $278,000. And we need to add that to the initial cost, giving us a total cost of $2.103 million. Whereas building it in-house, somewhat cheaper, for the development cost than buying it out, $1.15 million, and the risk cost is still the same, but there's a 25% probability. So we need to multiply 25% by the risk cost, which will give us $695,000, add that to the initial cost, and that gives us a total of $1.845 million. So the expected monetary value analysis has shown us that despite the increase in risk, it's highly likely that designing it in-house would be cheaper than buying it out, despite the very large risk costs involved. Let's look at a second example, and I'll do the math for this a slightly different way to help reinforce this particular method. In this example, you're a company that imports power supply units, which I'll call PSUs from now on, from your usual Far Eastern country supplier. From previous similar projects, there has been a 5% PSU failure rate after testing. Of course, we need to carry out testing for our product before shipping to the customer, and testing costs $800 per power supply unit. But going back to this 5% of them failing, the cost of us then repairing them, because it would be too expensive to send them back to the Far East, for each failed power supply unit is $1,200. We then ship this power supply unit in our equipment and install it at the customer's site. After customer installation, should any fail there, it would cost you $30,000 to repair each power supply unit. After all, it means sending one or more people across the world quickly, staying in hotels to carry out the repair. So the risk analysis you're trying to work through here is should you bother testing or not, considering the impact based on the failure rate and the high cost to repair each power supply unit. So we start here with our node of test and create a decision tree analysis diagram on the assumption we will proceed with testing. We know from the above it's going to cost us $800 to carry out testing before we ship to the customer for every single power supply unit. If as a result it passes, and we know that since there's a 5% failure rate, 95% of them pass, then for those that do pass, there's no extra cost involved, only the $800. So the cost for each power supply unit that passes is 95%, since that's the rate, times $800, which gives you a cost of $760 per power supply unit, assuming the one we're talking about here is one of the 95% that passed. But what about the ones that fail? Well, we know that every one that fails, it costs us $1,200, and that 5% of them fail. So we've still got to carry out the testing of $800, but now we've got to factor in these numbers here. So the fail cost for those power supply units that fail is 5% times the original $800 plus the $1,200, which conveniently comes to $2,000, giving us $100 as a fail cost per power supply unit. But we haven't finished with our analysis yet. For the total cost for the test option, we need to add up both of these. In the first case, it cost us $760. In the second, $100, giving the total test option of $860.
Now let's look at the outcomes when we consider that we're not going to bother testing. Well, if we don't do any testing, we don't incur a cost of $800, so that's zero. Off to a flying start then. If the result, even after no testing, is that 95% of them pass, as it says up here, then we know there's still no cost. So this truly is a zero cost option when they don't test and they work perfectly for the customer. So the pass cost option is in fact zero dollars. What about the 5% that fail where we've got to send a service engineer across the world at an incredible expense to fix it at a customer site? We know that's going to cost us $30,000 and 5% of them from hard experience are due to fail. Let's look at these costs. So the fail cost here is 5% times $30,000, which will give you $1,500. So for the option of not bothering to test at all, is adding up zero plus $1,500, which of course gives you $1,500. The result here showing that it's far cheaper to test than not to test. And since we've already covered the quality management knowledge area, I'm sure you shouldn't be surprised that it's cheaper to test. Okay, so there's decision tree analysis. This one you've seen before, it's called the Monte Carlo analysis, and we looked at it in terms of estimating, which we covered in the time management knowledge area. We're now, of course, interested in risk. And at the time I mentioned, this will give you an overall project risk. I'll only skim over this quickly since I've covered this already. But we know that this process is done by carrying out multiple calculations and that this process takes into account path convergence. This is places in the network diagram where many paths converge into one activity. And we can come up with a range of figures for likely outcomes and likely risk areas. Again, all you need to know for the exam is what Monte Carlo analysis is. And it is a useful tool used in quantitative risk analysis and modelling techniques.